th things are at a place that are relatively well, better than what than say ten or fifteen years ago. When uh, when the economy had crashed. But how are we using what we have? I'm just going to read Ecclesiastes 11. There's a, another thing here. It says, Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of, of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In other words, life goes in a cycle, and there's you know, the little action that you do today will, might have repercussions that you have no idea how it will be. God God has ways of working things out in, in unique ways that you don't even know. And just like you don't even know how a bone grows inside uh, a womb or how the spirit works, just like that, you don't know how God will work. Use that. We can... We can uh, so this cast this bread on the water, as it were. You know, as the, as human humanity goes past us, and and it's like the river, and we have an opportunity to to throw bread into this river. We have opportunity to cast it out. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. It might come back for us. And it might not come back to help us. But it's light today, and tomorrow might be dark. Dark things might be worse tomorrow. And how do we? contribute to the wheel of life how do we look at the people that go do we see them as people with a destiny or as a faceless stream well humanity is a stream but it's made up of individuals with a destiny how do how do we manage what we have when things are going well if you would, you can turn to 2 Kings again here. 2 Kings 4. This is a real life story of casting bread on the water. A real life story. You all like real life stories, right? <laughs> and when we have, this is a story of a, of a lady who when the things were going well for her, she was a. It's she was the Shunammite woman in verse eight, and she had possessions, and she had a desire to use them for something positive. Verse eight: It, it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunam. And Shunem was in the tribe of Issachar there. I don't know if that means anything or not. But Issachar had people that was known for people that had vision. People that could think, um, could think beyond today. Um, in Second Chronicles it says that the men of Issachar in David's time uh, knew the times and they knew how Israel should go. I don't know if it was always that way, but I thought it was interesting that this woman was part of that in that area or that, from that place. So it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in to eat. He stopped to eat, have uh, lunch with them. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in there. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, 
Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie to thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. So, I don't know what possessed her. Here, there, she was on the, on the main road, and Elisha would go by, and she, I think Elisha was someone that everyone knew in Israel there. He was the prophet. And she just had the. She just call him in. Here, eat lunch with us. Have let's let's drink coffee. Let's we're gonna we're gonna let's just stop in, and relax a bit. And she got to know him. It's Elisha and Gehazi. Elisha and Gehazi. They'd stop in and and after a bit, you know, she said, you know, don't you think we could build a just build a room? We can build a bedroom up top. Okay, okay. So. I don't know who did the work, him or her, but they got the, they got this room, hauled the bricks upstairs and laid them out, and built the room, and she went yard sailing and got a, got a table, and a chair, and a lamp, and fixed it up nice. So here, here comes Elisha and Gehazi the next time. They said, "Come in, come in, let's eat lunch." I eat lunch. She said, "Hey, I gotta show you something." So they took them upstairs and. Elisha, he just said, wow, wow, that's, this is nice. Oh, he's tired. Oh, so she's all happy, you know, because he likes it. So they, anyway, he lays down, he goes to sleep, and he wakes up, and he's thinking about this. And he said, you know, this was really nice of this lady to do that for, for us. I said, Gehazi, what can we do for her? You think we can do anything for her? Well, Gehazi, he doesn't know. He's, uh, Elisha said, go call her up. So he calls her up and he says, so would, what would you like for us to do for you? Would you like us to, to make you, uh, to, to, to go talk to the king? We, we, could, we have contacts there. We can go talk to the king if you want something done, any legal work or anything. We, we go talk to the king for you. No, no, she said, I don't need that. No, no, she doesn't need anything. No. Okay, so she goes back down, and Elisha's thinking. And Gehazi says, you know, she doesn't have any children. I think she might like some children. Okay, call her back up. So he called her back up. She comes, and he, and so he tells her, she said, you're going to have a son. Here in a few months, you're going to have a son. Oh, please, she said, don't lie to me. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, he said, I'm serious. And sure enough. Sure enough, she had a son. And she loved this boy. Oh, she loved this boy. And she thought that her that this bread had come back, and this was a really good thing. And this was amazing. Here she was trying to help help uh, Elisha, and she got a son out of the out of it. And she was so happy. And life was life was good. She enjoyed she enjoyed life. She enjoyed visiting with them, coming, they'd stop in for lunch and supper, stay there, and he could study for whatever he studied for and write things down and Yeah, it was just it was really nice. And then the child, he grew up, you know, he got bigger and taller. He wanted to go out. He wanted to, he was he wanted to go out and and work. So he went out with his dad out to the field and it was hot. All of a sudden he had a terrible headache. Do you ever have headaches? Any of you young people have, or children have headaches? Sometimes we do, don't we? And they hurt. Well, the boy had a headache and he was, oh, so Elisha was not, hadn't come for a while. 
got this headache. So he, his dad, he was so bad, he just had to sit down. and So bad, his dad said, well, take him back to his mom. Um, he'll be better after a while. But he didn't get better. He actually died. His headache got worse and worse and worse. And finally he died. And the lady was so, so sad. What is she going to do now? This was her son. That was our only one. So she didn't know what to do. She was frantically, she just carried him upstairs and laid him on the bed and went out and told her husband that she's got she's going to go get Elisha. So they got the, they got the he sent a, a servant over there. And they got the they got the car out of the garage and they drove to find Elisha. They drove fast. They didn't even worry about speed limits. They didn't even worry about bumps in the road. Or they come to a checkpoint and they just hurriedly they get their paperwork. They fly through there. They go anyway. They found Elisha. They said, Elisha, that boy that you gave us, he died. Come, please, come. Elisha said, okay, sure, sure, sure. I'll send Gehazi can go back. He said, Gehazi, get your stick and uh, go. And you just go up and you lay it on his face and then he'll be better. No, she said, that's not going to work. You come. You get here. Okay, so Elisha, he gets there in the car with them and they turn around and they go back. So they get back there and Elisha goes up there and he sees this child laying there. He's, he's not living anymore, so he's just he's laying there. And he tells Gehazi, well, Gehazi gets there first, and Gehazi lays the stick on his face, and it doesn't work. So anyway, Elisha goes up, and he prays, and, and the child, he prays, and prays, and the child gets warm, and, and um, then he sneezes, and he sneezes, and he sneezes, and he sneezes. How many times did he sneeze? Does anyone know? Seven. You know the story. <laughs> seven times he sneezed. So he didn't die after seven sneezes. He actually came to life. But some people say he die after seven sneezes. So he went. Get, uh, he got his mom to come back up. He actually got the child's mom to come up. And she was so overjoyed. She just fell down on the floor, and she said, I mean, she was just so, so happy. Anyway, Elisha liked this. He really, really liked being with this, with this lady and her family, her husband and her family. And he liked it. And, and after, after what Elisha, or what God did there, um, yeah, as far as we know, the child grew up and became, it, it, that kindness really came back to, uh, to, to be a blessing for her because of what she had done. Her heart, she had cast her bread out before them. And Elisha, the story isn't done. Um, so Elisha... Let the, the child grew up and everything. But then if you turn over a few more chapters in chapter 8, you see of her again. And Elisha, he still remembers. I don't know if he, if he got busy and quit coming again. But, you know, he, he sent her some, he sent her, her, one time when he stopped in, he said, you know, I'm just going to tell you. He said, there is going to be hard times coming. You know, you've had a lot of, you've had things going well for you, but there's hard times coming. And he said, it would really be good for you if you could just move out of Israel for a while. He said, there's going to be, there's going to be a famine for seven years. So the next seven years are going to be really, really bad. He said, you need to, you should just go. Go live somewhere else. It doesn't matter where. Just go live somewhere else outside of this outside of this country. And she trusted Elisha enough that she actually did. 
I don't know. I don't think she had a husband anymore, but I don't know that for sure. I don't think so. So they, they moved and went and lived with the Philistines in the land of the Philistines for a while. So they were foreigners. They weren't well-known people there. They weren't, they weren't, uh, hungrier, and, but there was a few that profited well, and some were really greedy, and anyway, while she was gone, this, I'm going to call him the local, yeah, I'm going to call him a fat geezer, he's a fat geezer, you know, he goes around, oh yeah, there's a nice place, I'm going to live in there, my uh, lady just left, and, yeah, so he lives in there, and he's got uh, people coming, and the famine's gone now, and they got crops out, and they're really, really, he's living in the house. And they have, oh, he's just having a good time. <clears throat> yeah. So, the woman comes back, and he's sitting there in his chair, fat geezer sitting in his chair, drinking his coffee in the morning, and yelling at the servants, and they're coming, and The lady says, well, this is my house. I, uh, we left here a while ago, but it's my house. I, st I never sold it. And he said, oh, yeah, no, I've been living here all the time. Who are you? And she said, this is my house. No, he said, no, it's not your house. <laughs> no, I've, been, I've gotten quite a few houses from people that, that left. And this is, I like this one. This is my house. And she went to the lawyer and lawyer wouldn't do anything. Some good stories. Oh, Gehazi, he says, yeah, yeah, we, uh, you know, yeah, I know a good story. He said, there was this lady back, you know, over by Shunem, down the, right on the road there. He said, she made a, she made a room, and she did this, and Elisha, he was so happy. He, he just, he liked it so much that he uh, told her she's going to have a son. And then she had a son, and all of a sudden, the son died, and he went and raised it back up again. Oh, really? Yeah, he did. It was a, it was, it was, that was something that was very unusual. Oh, the king, he's thinking about this. That's really nice. And what do you know? All of a sudden, knock, 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 knock. And uh, there's this woman and this boy. They're in there, and, and they've been traveling for a while, and they look like they've been living in their car and it's just hard on them and she says king I got a problem Gehazi I said hey that's the woman I've been telling you about that's her right there that and this is the boy look king that's the same one okay so all of a sudden the king he's already he's already kind of interested in this lady's case because of what Gehazi had already said so she says, you know, 
we had to leave for the famine, and we were gone for the last seven years, and we came back, and there, there's this man down here that's in my house, and I can't get him out. I went down to the, I went to a lawyer, I went to the pro, to the real realtor or to the courthouse to get the property records, and they've lost him, and I just can't get anything out. I just can't, I, I can't, I don't have a place to go, and I still have the house. But my husband had left it to me, but it's still, I still have it, but I just don't, I can't get him out. King said, well, we'll help you with that. So he calls his general over here, and he says, uh, why don't you go with the lady and go down here to the house uh, and just help her get it back. Okay. So down to the house they go again the next morning, and Fat geezer still there drinking his coffee and bossing the servants and knock, 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 knock. And uh, he yells, what's going on? And the servant says, oh, it's that woman again. It's that woman again. Ah, oh, tell her to go away. Tell her to go away, he said. And so the servant comes back and he says, just go away. Well, then the general, he rides up or he comes in there and he's got 50 men with him. He says, not so fast, not so fast. I've got orders from the king here. He walks right into the dining room, and Fat Geezer, he's a while. He sits down, and he says, what are you doing here? He says, well, you got to leave. No, no, he said, no. This is my house. He said, not anymore. So he gets them out, takes the servants out, cleans it all up, mows the yard, does all the stuff. And the lady and her son, they get to live there again. And it all started because, because she, God worked this all out for her, all different ways. Because she had the heart to cast her bread before Elisha many years ago, or be, several, yeah, many years before. And God worked it all out just so interestingly. And, you know, God does the same thing. We don't know what we're going to do when we, when we see somebody along the way. And it can be a friend. It can be someone we don't know. It can, be, it can be someone we've known for many years. And it can be someone we don't even like sometimes. But a little uh, casting bread out into the stream of humanity coming by takes, a, um, takes really interesting turns. God can use those for a lot of different things. Um, I'd like to t turn to now to Matthew 25. And I just, this is more of a, this is more of a kind of a, a picture of the final judgment. And when we think of life, and we think of the way our life is going and the way um, we respond to situations and the way we, we handle things, God is actually keeping track. God knows. He writes things down, and all of us have a, have a record book. <coughs> all of us have a record book, and all of our things are written, written in that book. Anyway, verse 31, Matthew 25. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. He'll be the judge. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So there's going to be a separation. And he shall set the sheep over here on his right hand. But the goats he'll put over on the left side. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So I've given, I've had this kingdom prepared for all you, for the, for the true Christians. I've, uh, that I've, I've uh, predestinated this kingdom to you from way back for, for the true called ones. For I was in hunger. And you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger. You took me in. Naked, 
and you clothed me. I was sick, and, and, uh, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And the righteous will say, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger? When did we feed you? When did we see you thirsty? When did we give you drink? We never saw you. When saw we thee a stranger? When took, when took and took thee in? We never did that to you. Or naked and clothed thee. When saw we thee in sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart, go away from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in, naked, and you clothed me not, sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or strange, a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, or truly, I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not, to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. These shall go to everlasting punishment, but the righteous to life eternal. You know, none of these people did not know, they didn't see Jesus as such. They just had a, because they served Jesus, they, they treated other people like they thought Jesus would treat other people. And, and Jesus said, well, when you do that, you're treating them like, that was me. You were actually treating me when you did that. And, and your bread, it, got, it was cast out into, into this water here. And it comes back to you now. And the others said, well, Lord, we didn't know that. It was you. If we would have known it was you, I sure we would have done it. Well... You had the same opportunity and the same, yeah. You didn't cast the bread in, so there's nothing to come back. Anyway, so it's, a, it's a, something that I'd like to, for us to, to challenge us with. When we see needs around us, even if it's, it might be little needs, it might be whatever, that we have a heart for people like Jesus did and not just write people off. The, the devotional this morning, you know, the priest and the Levite and the uh, Samaritan, you know, they went around, well, the Samaritan didn't go around, but the priest, you know, he walks around the, the, the wounded man, the, the hurt man there. And the Levite, he walks around them because, you know, they have things to do. They have places to go and they got, they're, they're kind of good to go. But do you think they would be on the left or the right? They'd probably be on the left because they didn't see the least among them there. So I'd like to leave that as a challenge with us to take the opportunities that we have and do it, not cast the bread out, not so that we can re receive it so much as it is to that God fills us with his love and we shine that out. Let's stand for prayer. Father, thank you for your word and for the, the stories with lessons that you give us. Thank you for the Proverbs that you give us too, Lord, and the way that we can learn. Thank you for your kingdom and for the opportunity to be a part of your kingdom and to, to have you in our life and controlling our life. Father, help us to become, to be Christ-like and not try to, to be both, be Christ-like and unChrist-like. Help us to recognize opportunities, to cast bread out into the water of life as we go through as well. 
We also ask a blessing on each one today. On um, as we go from here and where this week, these activities take us, may we be faithful to you until you call us home. In Jesus' name, Amen. You may be seated. And let's have a song. Church hymnal number 515. Five hundred fifteen. 